having been a DJ, I had access to so much different music um, and really intimately, I had an intimate relationship with music uh, of all different genres, whether it was classic rock or electronic music, um, primarily even like rap music because I grew up listening to rap. Um, I grew up listening to rap in LA, a lot of West Coast rap. I really loved DJ Quick, Dr. Dre, those were big influences as a kid. Um, when I played drums as a kid though, when I took my lessons, they would never really let me play drums to rap tracks because all the drums were programmed in rap songs. So they would play classic rock for me because those used real live drums. Um, so I practiced drums with classic rock and that's where I got um, exposed to the Eagles and Foreigner and you know tons of you know rock from the 70s and, and, and early 80s and mid 80s and, and Nirvana ultimately through the 90s and whatever else. Um, I still know how to play Smells Like Teen Spirit and, and whatever else but that was amazing because it gave me a wide array of, of access and when I started DJing then I really got a deep understanding because I needed to know how to play everything that was on the radio so I had to know how to do the pop stuff. Uh, I, needed to, I needed to understand pop music, I needed to understand uh, rap music, I needed to understand rock music, I needed to understand whatever was hot. And um, also in DJing, between mixing records back and forth, you needed to understand the arrangement and structure of certain songs in order to know where to bring the next one in or the tempo in order to know what song to mix with other songs. So DJing was a great foundation for understanding music um, and understanding the structure of music and how songs work with one another. Um, that being said, um, in the studio I still apply my knowledge of drumming a lot. I, I played piano for one year as a child, so my melody isn't as strong as, as other people's. But it's not a surprise to me that the CEO of Atlantic Records, Craig Kalman, was a DJ. Uh, my mentor and partner, Mike Karen, um, who is the president of Global a r for Warner Music Group, was a DJ. I'm a retired DJ. Uh, Many of my clients, like David Guetta or DJ Frankie, um, or formerly DJ Feli Fell of Power 106 in Los Angeles, DJs. Uh, my mentee, my protege, Miles Beard, who's an incredible up and coming ANR, also a DJ. He used to be a DJ on Kiss FM uh, out here in Los Angeles on the radio. So I think DJs have an incredible knowledge base for music um, and have their pulse on what's going on. Um, and before the advent of blogs and people being able to access music as quickly as they are today, DJs were really the source of new music and where to find, you know, stuff first. And yeah, I, and I think that's what gave me the advantage. A lot, I know a lot of other executives that were just music lovers or um, came from marketing backgrounds or promotion backgrounds and simply had the relationships or access to um, unsigned artists or hung out in studios a lot and that doesn't make them any better or worse ANRs but I certainly think that I have and our team at APG has a creative advantage truly understanding music from a ground up and being able to communicate to producers in their language and songwriters in their language and you know many of the many of the ANRs on our staff including myself have co-written hit records so um yeah, you know, to, to be able to communicate to artists and songwriters and producers uh, by knowing their background and what they do is, is incredibly helpful.